high. Hi, so I'm making this video so that all of you out there who want to find the answer of how to match bipolar junction transistors, because I typed it in a bunch of times and there's nothing. There's not a video titled How to Match Transistors. But I'll show you right here. The multimeter connected uh, the, the black, uh, this black wire is connected to the emitter. Um, if you were to look at a, uh, if you were to look at a transistor, um, from the top, you'd kind of notice that it looks kind of like the one in the middle is the base, uh, the one on the left is the emitter, and the one on the right, collector, because the current is going this direction. But there's a little, like, uh, latch right here that uh, is closed unless there's a current uh, going to the uh, the base um, and when there is a current going to the base it's called the uh, biased, it's forward biased now it's PC547, that's the um shit, I'm fucking handwriting that's the kind of transistor I'm uh, fucking with right now kinda looks like this when it's all uh Ready? See how this uh, black one's right there, and the red one is actually uh, connected to both the uh, the uh, well shit. I yeah. Oh no, no. Yeah, the reds. I totally fucked up. The reds actually supposed to be connected to the the, the emitter and the base, and the collector is supposed to be the black one. The red one's actually in diode mode on the multimeter, it's sending a, a tiny little voltage into this EJT. Bipolar junction transistor. It's sending it to the emitter, so the the emitter has a voltage, and it's sending it to the base, so that that gate can open. If gate was closed, then the black lead wouldn't notice. A voltage and if it was uh, open it would. If you touch it while you're doing this it's going to change the reading um, because it's very sensitive to temperature. I mean we're dealing with millivolts here. You don't want to touch it anyway because of the static that could potentially destroy this thing. I got these from uh, Mauser.com. So diode mode is uh, this guy. Looks like a diode. If you've never seen a diode uh, on a schematic it looks like that's what it looks like. If you have a Zener diode. Is a shot key diode. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not a diode guy. So we're in diode mode. You know, actually, it might be better to leave that off while you're attaching these so that you don't get the voltage all over the place. I already tested these, and I know that the ones at the end are very, very close. And What's kind of cool about these uh, BC547s, you can see how it's like wider on the bottom and then it gets skinny up top. And that skinniness up top kind of gives you a perfect little way for you to short circuit the emitter, which is on the left, if you're facing the flat side. And let that sit so my fingers don't fuck with it because I just touched it a while. And it's 638. 639. Earlier, I uh, measured 633. So I think um, me um, fucking with it uh, has changed voltage transistor number two. Oh, 637. 
and I had 639 before. So these are within 2 millivolts of each other. Um, so I now have two matched transistors. Yes, 639 again. 640. Okay, cool. Dope. Alright, 638. Nice. Everything's matching so far. I can basically use all of these. 633. Ooh, that one's pretty low. So that one's not going to be matched with any of the prior ones. 633, I guess it'll be matched with that one. Oh shit! Fuck, <laughs> you guys have just been looking at my hands this whole time. Uh, what do I got here? 639. As you can see, they're all kind of landed near there. I actually have pairs of all of these marked on here. These two, and these two. Two, these two, and uh, this guy. Notice how I'm not touching these with my fingers. Static electricity, and also you can see on there whenever I touched it with my fingers that the base emitter voltage would increase by a very small amount. These transistors are tricky. You can use things like field effect transistors now. Or, um, JFET op amps in them. So that right there is a TL074, so it has four op amps in it, which is just basically like four um, transistors arrays uh, that will do all the work for you, so you don't have to do all this bullshit. Um, it's, it's awful hard to find uh, matched transistors. Um, Basically, because it takes, you know, a person, like, actual time to think about and do it. Whereas the rest of your electric components, they just sort of pop out of the machine. Um, I hope that this uh, helped you learn how to uh, match transistors. And if you end up uh, breaking one of them, um, yeah, you know, let's go see how much those things cost. I'm going to Mauser.com. We're doing a BC547. It costs 19 cents, so... You can expend a nickel if you fucked it up, but I obviously didn't fuck any of, of mine up, and and I was I was throwing them all around willy nilly like, um, yeah. My intention is to make that a uh, ladder filter by Moog. There's a, I mean that machine has uh, 17 transistors in it, and it has. Uh, seven resistors in it. It's got there's one thing that I couldn't really understand in the schematic and it was the uh, the current source and the amps because there was a DC current source and an AC current source. The AC current source is the, is the music, it's the sound, uh, the frequency coming from the VCO. The DC uh, source is obviously supplying voltage to it. Why is there a, a source of, of amps? I haven't gotten that far in my knowledge. But uh, don't don't go don't go about making these circuits that you will find on on the internet with people telling you how you can match transistors that way. Odds are they're going to be matched anyway, <laughs> or close to it. Um, and I can't really even think of any other situation which you would need to match a transistor, but, you know, the Moog ladder filter is worth it. I mean, that thing probably what you can probably sell them for like 300 bucks, the transistor, 20 cents. <laughs> Peace out. Oh, I kind of forgot.
forgot to explain the whole theory behind why you do that. Um, in the transistor, the leg on the left is the emitter. That's where the electrons are flowing from. The leg in the middle is the base, and that's the one that's kind of controlling the door. If, it's, uh, if there's no current going into it, it's closed. Uh, if there is current, it opens up. Uh, that's complicated. It's called an NBN transistor because the N stands for negative and the P stands for positive. Um, the N is negative because there are more electrons per square foot in that area because it was it's, it's silicon doped with germanium which has an electron in its valence shell that it lends to silicon. The silicon atoms become ions, they become negative ions because they have a covalent bond with uh, the germanium by sharing that little electron. Um, and then the positive region um, you add something else where it's missing a valence electron and so it's actually taking electrons from silicon and so you end up getting positive ions and so these positive ions that are in the middle sandwiched in between the negative portions that's what's connected to the base leg and so you have an NPN you have negative ions here with germanium you have the positive ions here with whatever that atom is that they put in the, they call doping it that's what they put it in there and then you have negative ions here um, emitter base collector. Like before you put the charge in there, the electrons from uh, the emitter side, they can't pass over that positive edge because the ions of the negative N-doped side are attracted to the positive ions in the P-doped side. Um, and so it all of those electrons sort of like fill in those areas because they're like, oh, there's atoms over there that I want to share a covalent bond with. Um, and so these electrons like sort of build up a wall and they make the, uh, the silicon in that region polarized. Um, and that's called the depletion region. So then these electrons, they want to jump over that P region, but they can't because there's other electrons there. And uh, just like magnets, they repel each other. So those electrons, they can't get through that little gate unless you put a charge onto a base lead. And what that charge does, oh, yeah. What the charge does is this P region that was positively charged, it fills it in with electrons because you now have a charge going into it. And now that it's filled in, um, the electrons that were in that depletion region, they just go back to doing what they normally do because there's nothing that they're really attracted to there because it's just all electrons now. And so now, basically, when you put a charge into the base of a transistor, you've turned this NPN transistor into uh, an entirely uh, negatively charged transistor. And so the electrons now are attracted to the... Um, positive polarity at the uh, end of the collector. The collector is going to be connected to a ground, the positive side of a battery. It's going to be connected to something that's going to attract uh, the, uh, the electrons. Um, and so when, you're, when you short circuit these uh, bipolar junction transistors, um, what you're doing, the black lead is actually measuring the voltage in parallel because the voltage is going the uh, emitter and the base and in parallel they're going to feel the same voltage the amps will change but it doesn't matter we have a current from the emitter of some amount and we have a current from the base of some amount and they they kind of sum i don't know how i don't there's probably some calculation as to how much they sum but they sum and then that's what the uh, collector picks up and so we don't aren't really concerned with the exact number. It could have been 639, it could have been 640. It is going to produce a current that when combined with the emitter's current of transistor A, it's going to equal the, the current 
the transistor B is going to send to its collector from the base in the emitter. Um, it's really interesting how that works. I don't know. I watched a video on YouTube where some guys, it was, it was like a robot talking and it was an animated thing, but um, that's exactly how everything in the world works. Maybe like computers, just a bunch of transistors. Um, even like nowadays, like you and I, you know, the people who are making analog synthesizers, we fucks around with uh, resistors and diodes. A transistor can act like a diode, can act like a resistor. Um, you can arrange them to act pretty much any way you want them to. Um, that's why you have uh, like Arduino boards. They can act like any circuit that you want because an Arduino board is just filled with a bunch of transistors. Um, 